Okay, I'm going to show you a technique now on how to create sort of custom clouds. And what we can do is, uh, let's say we have a uh, terrain in the scene, and we just want to have, or sort of a mountain uh, type terrain, and we want to have some clouds kind of going around the top of it. Uh, well, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So let's uh, load in a standard terrain, and I'm going to go ahead and edit this just a little. And what I want to do is uh, just raise up sort of our top part right here. Uh, right in the center and what we're gonna do is make some clouds that go around this and I'm going to click OK and now there's a couple of different ways we could do this uh, depending on the shape of your terrain of course in this case we might even be able to use a torus which we can go ahead and load that in and of course uh, sort of rotate that and size it to fit around that area maybe even stretch it out a little and sort of position that around the terrain and then of course add a cloud object to that uh, but let's say we have something a little more complex uh, something that's not so round uh, and actually we could edit that just a little and I'm going to raise up the side of our terrain just to a little more odd of an object that would be more difficult to cover uh, the area with just sort of a torus object. So what I want to do, let's just bring this up just a little bit, just play around with it, make it look a little bit better, and click OK. And what I want to actually do is create a meta blob object. And we can define uh, sort of our clouds around this. Uh, by using a variety number of primitive shapes, creating a meta blob, and then applying that cloud texture to it. Uh, so let's go and uh, add in a few things. Now uh, we could use mostly spheres if we wanted to. We could also use our torus as sort of a main object and then uh, go in and out with the meta blob. Uh, but I'm going to use spheres because I think it'll be a little bit easier uh, to sort of define that area that we want to have the clouds. and I'm going to actually create a new layer. So go down to the lower, lower right hand corner and hit new layer and that's going to be our cloud layer. We can just drag that new sphere into there. And now this way we'll just be able to separate this from the rest of the objects in the scene. And hit copy and paste, so control C and control V and just copy and paste these uh, sort of around uh, this mountain peak. And making sure that we're going along uh, with the shape of this terrain. So that we're matching up. So it's going completely around it. And we might even need to add some filler objects in there. Some uh, larger cloud or larger spheres or some smaller ones to kind of fill in the gaps. I'm just going to give you a basic idea right now just by adding a few of these in here. This is just a good way to sort of define the area. And now we have that sort of odd shape uh, that we couldn't just do with the torus. And we could even bring all these down if we wanted to. So we can select the whole layer and just move that down, uh, which is another advantage of putting it in its own layer. So this way we can edit all of our cloud objects uh, before we go ahead and make it into a meta blob. And of course we want uh, we can go ahead and select some of these and pull some of them down and pull some of them up just so that it's not so uniform and not so uh, horizontally the same and doesn't just go straight across we get a little more variation which adds a little bit more realism to the scene okay so now what I want to do is take all of these spheres we just created and uh, I'm going to select the bottom one down in the layer hold down the shift key and select the top one which is going to select all of them uh, we could also select that just that top layer too, which will also select all of them, uh, but that really depends on whether or not you have its own layer or not. So what I'm going to do now is go over to the left and I'm going to click the Create Meta Blob Object button. And now we sort of have our little Meta Blob in there, which is defining our area. And now pretty much the easiest thing to do is just go in and add a cloud surface to that. Uh, but first I want to be able to define that area a little bit better or actually be able to see the clouds better uh, which I think we'll be able to do if we actually add a material to our terrain. 
Uh, so I'm just going to go in and add uh, one of these basic landscapes. Uh, just something a little interesting. Just so that we don't have all those same colors blending together with the ground plane, uh, the terrain, and all the clouds. Okay, so now we're going to select our meta blob object, and we want to define our material for the entire meta blob, which we can do by double clicking on our preview and pulling up our advanced material editor. Uh, and then we can just double click on the preview again and sort of load in uh, one of the presets. And there are many different clouds you can use. Uh, if we go to other clouds under the clouds tab uh, we have some cloud spheres in here uh, which you can use uh, i would not suggest using any of the other types of clouds because these are mostly meant for uh, infinite planes and when you're using a cloud plane just pull these out here and i'm just going to grab uh, one of these cloud spheres and click ok and we'll let that render out and as you can see uh, we don't exactly have the whole object being filled in uh, by this cloud. So some changes are going to be needed to be made uh, to this actual texture itself. But this just is, does give us a good starting point. And I can even scale that down a little, which might fill it in. Or even increase it and see what that does. And you just got to kind of play around with it uh, because every object is different. And depending on the scale you're working with, uh, you might end up with a different type of shape. So we'll go ahead and double click on that object and take a look at it and see exactly what makes it work. Uh, because a good way to really kind of learn how these materials work is to sort of reverse engineer them where we can load them in and then go through their settings and see how they were created. And if I go to our transparency tab we can see we have a filter running on there. Uh, we also have the fuzziness set. We can set it to solid. Uh, because we're having too much transparency in the edges we can bring that down to solid click OK and that should fill in a little bit more. We noticed that it did. And we could even bring it in a little tiny bit more. Click OK. And that brightens it up just a little bit more. And we still kind of have that nice shape we were looking for. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick render of this. I uh, rendered a screen uh, 640 by 480 just so we can see it. And just do a final render so that anti-aliasing looks a little bit better. We'll just render that up. And you can see that we actually see the outlines of our object around uh, this material. And that's mostly because uh, the type of material it is. It is not a volumetric material. If we go back to our uh, advanced material editor, we can notice that it's a simple material and not volumetric. Uh, the only problem is once we set it to volumetric, we take a look. Uh, we're going to need to make uh, some more drastic changes, and this might be exactly what you're looking for. Let's bring this up to a white, and we'll let that render. And a lot of the time, uh, meta blobs sometimes do not work with the volumetric materials, uh, but it seems to be working right now, and we get a much better look. Uh, but it will be harder to define uh, sort of the cloud areas and exactly uh, where the outlines are. Uh, but of course we could adjust the density uh, within the function editor and kind of change that up a little bit. We'll just let that open up. And we have some of these settings that we actually can't see on the bottom right now uh, just because of the screen resolution. And we can go in here and change these if we wanted to. Uh, I'm going to pretty much stick with what we have because right, it looks alright to me. Uh, but we could increase some of our settings. And maybe our amplitude will give us just a little bit more uh, to the overall texture. And then we can up our fuzziness and our density. And that will kind of remove some of those areas. And click OK. We'll let that render out, and now we can see we actually lost a lot of the detail. Uh, so we'll decrease our fuzziness. And our preview that we have right here, uh, the small preview, isn't always exact uh, replicate of what you're going to see in the scene. So you pretty much have to close it out, let it re-render, and you get a better idea of how it's going to look. Uh, so let's go ahead and just render that out. 
And we can see that a few changes do need to be made now. Uh, one of the major changes uh, that needs to be made is if we take a look at our terrain around this area, uh, we can see because of the shape of our object, it's sort of cutting in uh, to the terrain. And even though this is a volumetric material, uh, what makes it up will sort of slice into some of our areas. Uh, so what we can do is go back to our meta blob and sort of individually edit some of those spheres and pull them out along this section, uh, which will give us a little more uh, clouds in that area. And what we might also want to do is actually increase the overall density uh, once again, uh, just because it is more of a light haze right now uh, than it is actual clouds. And we'll close that out. And what we can do is go back to our spheres and just kind of see which ones we need to edit. We can just pull that out, grab our other one, and pull that out. And that should improve our render quality just a little. We don't want to pull it out too far. Uh, but just so we're not intersecting uh, too much with the actual terrain, I'm going to go to Edit Material and up our density, uh, which is going to appear to be very white in our preview. Uh, but when we look at the preview in the actual scene, it'll look a little bit uh, brighter. And actually, we can see that that might have been a little bit too much. Maybe bring it down to 9 and just kind of adjust that. And your settings are going to vary because you'll probably have a different size terrain. I, I didn't really scale up this terrain too much and actually it's a pretty small terrain. Uh, so you might want to just kind of play with these things and see what looks right. And we've kind of got a bug in there right now uh, that you can notice that because we brought it up a little bit too high and started bringing it back down we end up with these very bright areas still even if we adjust our density even lower sort of reevaluates and uh, it doesn't quite look right. So you might not want to bring it up all the way because you could run into this little bug right here. Uh, but it's a pretty new effect. Of course you can use this for uh, lots of different applications of creating custom clouds. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in any sort of shape that would go around something, but just anything floating up in the sky. Let's say you wanted a specific cloud shape or you needed to uh, do a project where you had uh, sort of objects in the sky that looked like things and you know, this is probably one of the easiest ways to do it.